Hey everyone, I'm Joe Malovich, and today we're going to try out this turbine that Spencer Langston of Langston Alternative Power sent me, and we're going to see how it does. I have to get it sent back to him because he's going to take this alternator and rebuild it into a different type of turbine, or maybe take this same housing and put a different type of impeller inside. This is a air blower housing with a motorcycle alter alternator on the top of it, and an impeller turbo on the inside. You might see this turbine in a future land to house video even. I had intended on testing this at a fellow YouTuber's creek, Andy L. Link in the description. He has a suitable low head system, however he doesn't like to run his system in the winter due to freezing concerns. I'd like to thank these viewers for making this sort of content possible. This is a plug that will go in the end of a culvert to capture the water. I'm installing the foam on the inside to seal against the pipe and also foam on the outside to seal against the culvert. Here I'm digging out a stone that's under the end of the culvert to prevent erosion. This is where I'm going to clamp on the plug to the end of the culvert. This collection setup is being connected to a culvert I installed with the help of my dad two years ago. It allows easy vehicle and lawnmower access to the backyard. Unfortunately, my GoPro missed the framing here, but I'm clamping the plug on the end of the culvert and then propping up the pipe with this cross support. Here I'm adding a second clamp because the first clamp didn't seem to have a large enough throat and didn't seem very secure. I'm trying to gain as much head height as possible here. So I have, I have the pipe not all the way at the bottom. You can see that water's spilling over because there's just simply too much water to flow through the pipe. Even though I have the pipe at, I'd say a fairly severe angle, so it's losing head through the pipe too for that amount of flow. I'll get my hand in there for reference. Um, uh, maybe about 40 or 50 gallons a minute. And then I have at least another 20 leaking over there. And I can't get a reliable seal on a, a larger one. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do now. You can see I have a ratchet strap around there. That kind of helps some. I got this idea from none other than Spencer himself. And the water from the spillway runs through this 30 inch pipe that we've got plugged. As you can see, that's just an access holder. If I don't cut the water off, I just block the pipe feeding the turbine. Uh, I could maybe slot the pipe, but I don't really want to alter the pipe at all. And you can see down here at the bottom, right, right there, there's a stream coming out around the bottom of it too, so I'm not collecting all the water either. Guys, I might be onto something here. I just found this section of barrel that I have for the, the other part of the weir that's up on the hillside there. So I think maybe if I just incorporate this with it, it would work. That's more like it. Now I just need to connect up my pipes. And I got that one there with a uh, a seal around it and I'm going to force that in there. We're looking pretty good. I have a little tiny leak coming from around here, right? Right there. It's actually coming from the top. I think the hole that I have drilled in this 
piece of plywood here is a little bit too big and you see there's water coming up against it there. Of course, it's only in high flow situations and my my seal there is not, okay, it's perpendicular to the pipe, but the plywood here is not perpendicular to the pipe coming out. So if I'm looking vertically down at it there, you can see that it's tilted off and that's what's causing part of the problem. And that's because the entire barrel shell collector is tilted also. So I have the water coming down here. Out of the pipe. And that alone is uh, almost darn near high enough to put a water wheel under. And that's a few feet after the pipe. And then if we run or walk, not slip and die, down here. So if I put the uh, the draft tube right right here at the outlet from my turbine, then I'm holding my camera at eye height right now, and so that'll be about five and a half feet, and we can see, see the pipes clearly coming over my head. So. We're gonna have uh, <laughs> six or more feet of head to test with. So that should be ideal. All right, let's take a gallons per minute measurement for this and see the potential watts. Okay, that's a six gallon bucket. It takes 12 seconds to fill up. That's uh, 32 gallons per minute times six feet times 0.18 and you're looking at 32 watts total at 100% efficiency. Take half of that for efficiency losses. Then you're at 16 watts of power coming out of this pipe through that, through a barrel collection system which I'm gonna use as a buffer, and then through a low head turbine. And that's what you're looking at. And here's what I'm aiming for. It's filling up everything now. You can see it's starting to overflow up there. And it's spilling out there, and it's spilling out down there, and it's spilling out there, and I have a piece of wood in here blocking the outlet. So let's, uh... oh, now it's coming out over here, because that's filled up enough. Let's get this ice out of the way. Oh, okay, I have to roll my sleeve up. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. <gasps> That's cold. So that's what I have for the supply. Um, obviously the turbine's gonna slow down a lot and it depends on the load on the turbine might actually be able to run it on this amount of flow steady state. We'll see. I'm installing the turbine on the barrel outlet with only one stick of pipe just to see what it does. I'm hooking up a garden hose to my big turbine just to get a little bit extra flow.
Now I have to install the board that'll stop up the water. And I'm smarter this time. I got a longer board. Let's place that right over the outlet. And that'll plug up the water and uh, we won't have to fight water. During this initial test, we can see that it actually loses pressure pretty quickly, and I only get under a minute of actual test time, with the barrel acting as a buffer tank to give me the gallons per minute required just to run this turbine. Here I'm installing a draft tube, which is used as a suction tube to utilize 100% of the head height available. The tube that I'm using is a piece of triple wall drain pipe with holes drilled in it, and I just put foil tape over the holes to make it airtight. A quick explanation of how this works, you might think that a turbine should go at the very bottom. It can. So you have six feet of pressure driving the turbine with water. You could also put the turbine here and then you have three and then negative three pressure, feet of pressure. So you add them up and you still get six. If you put it up here, you get minus six feet of pressure and the difference between the two is still six. So no matter where you put this, as long as you have an airtight suction tube that's no more than about 30 feet in height, realistically probably about 20 feet, then you have a functioning turbine that doesn't care where it is. Now a turbine probably would prefer to be at the top so it's not dealing with positive pressure through the bearings and seals, but that's just my opinion. Here's my little MPPT setup that I'm gonna manually find the maximum power point. Again, this creates three phase AC, and we put that through a rectifier, which makes DC. And this DC goes into this watt meter, which has a built-in shunt. And then this is a 25 watt variable resistor. And we'll see if that uh, if that works. I I think I calculated it correctly. We'll see. First, I have to put some ends on these. Okay, let's try it again. I'm gonna fill up the tank and then drain it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to adjust this too much to get an optimum power point. There's just not enough time. I don't have enough water stored up. That's a peak of about 13 volts and 25 watts approximately. Now keep in mind that the barrel is draining while I'm doing this testing and it's only about half full at this point. Yeah, I can't, I can't find a maximum power point if the pressure is fluctuating continuously. So that's not gonna work, but we get the idea of how it's supposed to work with this as a load. Also, I feel I should point out that this is running at much higher gallons per minute than what I measured before. So my estimates from before were not relevant for this. And there we are. I would only have enough water to run this during high flow events. Well, that's it for this little project. I had a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a very wet, cold, snowy two days of work here. And I, I'd like to say everything's working like kind of how it's designed. Unfortunately, as you saw, I didn't have enough water to keep this loaded to run for a very long time. 
Also, I didn't have enough water pressure to generate enough voltage, so I need more, more height to make it work properly. This would be a great turbine if you had more water and a little bit more head pressure. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe so you don't miss future stuff like this. Links in the description for everything that I'm gonna say here. You can support this channel and future productions of these sort of videos through a, a few different means. Patreon is a significant one. I appreciate all of you Patreon supporters. Another one is PayPal. You can send me PayPal money directly and that avoids a lot of the fees. Uh, you can shop through my Amazon links, everything in the description again. Amazon links to things that I buy with my own money or the channel's money that I approve of. Nothing is sponsored in this channel at all. And there's also uh, a wish list that I have for the channel of things that you could buy to support the channel as a direct gift. And like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys around. Check out my other content where I build things like this turbine or the water wheel.